Pete, week six is here. Thank goodness, because week five for me was a disaster. Absolute disaster. I am embarrassed. I want to burn the algo. I honestly, like, I couldn't stop. I was at ACL over the weekend, and all I could think about was the late afternoon games that went 0-4. I've never seen that in my life. By the way, all four games, I didn't even realize this, all four games were in the Circa, which we forgot to post. Thank God. Thank goodness I forgot because I was probably two or three eddies deep uh, Sunday, very early, getting ready for my one excursion of the weekend to go hang out with 24-year-olds at a music festival. First off, what a loser I am. 14-year-olds, more like 24-year-olds. But, yeah, I mean, listen, I was at home watching it unfold. I kind of watch more football than I usually get the chance to this Sunday, but um, everything looked fantastically rosy, you know? So... It, it, recapping some of the highlights that we did have from week five, the primetime games, primetime scrubs, you guys went two and one. Um, I think another thing that you can't dismiss, those extra pro package games that the pros pay for, those games went two and one as well. So that's a nice little window of, of wins and opportunities that you got there. You know, Thursday through Sunday early, it looked fantastic. It was 5 and 3 until the 3 p.m., the dreaded 3 p.m. window started. Um, and to be honest, all of those games look great. They look the really third, good. They look the third good. quarter. Yeah, it, it. they looked good until they didn't. Well, what's funny, all four of them looked like they could go our way, the Algos way. And then all of a sudden, all four – went the wrong way which was very surprising that you that the algo would lose all four of those like you, maybe at worst you think one and three probably two and two but all of the better teams really stepped up late in the game um and got those covers there's there's another thing i wanted to point out there's two things really here the algo Something to make sure you pay attention to. When the Algo is solo on an island this season, on its own, it's 71%. Wow. So when we all disagree with the Algo, it's hitting 71%. It's the highest win percentage of any stat that, we, that we're tracking right now, which is pretty amazing, to be honest. So when you see the th myself, yourself, and our boy coach disagree with the Algo, uh, you've got to be really uh, leaning on the algo there. And the last thing, even though we had a, a rough 3 p.m. window, the prime time plus five package is sitting at 60% in the season, winning a bunch of money. If you can finish, if we can finish at 60% at the end of the season, that's going to be awesome. Um, our overall records, the algo is 36 and 37 and five. So still right there around 500. We're still very, very early. There are so many weeks Five of weeks. football. Right. So many weeks of football to go. So that's awesome. I'm 34, 39, and five. You're sitting at 38, 35, and five in the lead of 52%. And uh, our boy coach is the same as the algo, 36, 37, and five. I will say last week was a very, very challenging card for the algo to go 0 and 4, 4 and 0 in any slate. It's just as hard to do. A couple of things I'll mention that I think get me really excited. We have home and away data. And as the season progresses, that is going to start to average out. Uh, because even though we've got a lot of this season data, we're still utilizing some stale data from last year because we don't have a complete three-week rolling window on either the home side or away side for some teams. So just something to keep in mind. I don't mind being right around 500. Like you said, long, long season, uh, five weeks in, we're not, <laughs> this is a marathon. Even if we were on fire, which it really has been doing exactly what we had hoped specifically around the top five. I uh, was disappointed this week. 
uh, in the top five. And again, I say it all the time, Pete, if you're explaining, you're losing. Just think about any time you're at work and you had to explain something, you're You're probably getting fired. You're getting written up. If you're explaining, you've already lost. So I don't want to explain, but I I do want to just bring up a couple of things. The end of the Kansas City Minnesota game was extremely troubling for me. There were three flags on the last play on fourth and twelve. Granted, it was fourth and twelve. Granted, it was fourth and twelve. But there were flags all over the place. Somebody took his helmet off, uh, which is an automatic penalty. Then uh, there the were blatant just told PI. To put it back on, which is even told, more right. There was blatant PI all over the place, which I do believe restricted his ability to catch the ball. Um, it should have been Minnesota should have covered that. I that was one specific game that I really was annoyed about as I watched it from uh, from the backstage of the BMI tent. Uh, my wife was very happy she didn't have to uh, watch football. She turned the other way, listened to the band side stage. I was focused on NFL. I was upset about that game. That game stunk. Uh, and look, as bad as the four o'clock windows, the other went six and eight. Like it was, you know, so um, San Fran was a big thing. The primetime games, that's incredible. We go two and one. Green Bay, I'll tell you yesterday, I didn't feel great about that game going in. I really didn't. It felt like the Raiders were going to win that game. Obviously, they're at home and it just it just felt like that. I I don't know who who did I pick last week uh, in that game? We all it was a consensus. We all had Green Bay. We all had Green Bay. Yeah, I would have changed it. Had had going into that, uh, I would have felt I I just didn't. I felt like the algo had just been kind of limping into prime time for a 500. Just felt like it should be a losing week, which is well deserved because we had a great bounce back last time, week one, when we were going into the season blind. The algo had uh, didn't go six and ten, went six and eight, uh, and and then we had a. Big, big bounce back. I kind of feel like, again, reversion to the mean, long-term data, we're going to head in that direction. So I kind of like the spot that we're in here because there's no way none of our handicappers that, uh, you know, whether you're pro or amateur who are subscribing to data, no one took all four games. No. No one took all four games. No. Hey, um, before we get into the free three, um, two personal updates after trading away my whole front team in fantasy football finally got a win one and four look what happens when you make moves so i'm off the schneid there and i've had three consecutive winning weeks continuing to fade myself i am now so confident in fading myself that i no longer have to fade myself because my brain has picked up on who's really gonna win Wow. And we witnessed the first triple flip last week. Triple flip uh, all time. Eason picked it up. A lot of the media outlets were picking it up. No surprise there. Uh, yeah, it went down in the books. Um, so was was really impressed to see that. I've never witnessed it. We saw it live. Uh, I, I wasn't ready for it. I'll be honest. But I feel like, yeah, now you're back. Uh, my fantasy team stinks now. I've lost two in a row. Not happy. I just got absolutely blown out because I went up against somebody that started DJ Moore who put up a third of his points. And funnily enough, I went up against a team this week who benched DJ Moore. Oh, that's got to hurt. And that that just signified the, the turnaround and the look change, the mojo change for my team after tr- making tr- a trade for five five new players. So, yeah, I'm pumped. A few things, guys, if you do need help on the fantasy side, head over to rosterwatch.com. They're fairly inexpensive, especially after the draft. But this is where you make your moves. It's not just about drafting. You got to stay on top of your game. These boys are absolutely fantastic. Uh, Head over to rosterwatch.com. Support them. Uh, They are big proponents of Bet the Algo. Uh, we share some, uh, you know, we actually license our data to roster watch. Uh, really it's only, uh, probably about 60% of the games that, that we license. And then we keep 
the rest for our folks uh, on Patreon. So, um, guys, if you want the data, you want access to all the data, whether you want the prime time package is coming off a winning week, we'll take 67%. Uh, 30 bucks a month, you're getting, what, 12 games a month uh, for 30 bucks. Uh, that's, that's pretty solid. Uh, prime time plus five. 60 bucks. Patreon.com slash bet the algo. Come on over. We'd love to have you. Free picks last week. One and two. Not that great. Uh, but we're still winning on the free picks. And that's all more reason to join. Uh, we do the free picks really to pimp out the algo. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're pimping them out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Pimping them out. So let's get into it um, for the second straight week. We're going to include New England on the free three card. Why is that? Why do you think I'm doing that? Because the algo has correctly guessed the outcome, the winner, the one we should back our hard earned cash with correctly in all five games it's picked new england to win once and it's gone away from new england and not by win against the spread yeah so we're going to include that in today's uh free three pete new england uh this line it feels it feels right um it's three I see three and a half at FanDuel, but this number, Vegas is favored by three. I don't see a total on the game. I'm sorry, 41 and a half uh, for the total. What do you think here? New England absolutely, the second worst loss in Bill Belichick's career last week by the Saints and the worst loss in Gillette, I believe, ever. Things are broken in New England. Do they have a shot at redemption? And especially with the McDaniels, Belichick storyline, as well as Garoppolo. Yeah, this is, it's funny, second worst loss of his career right after the worst loss of his career. So it's been a the worst two-week stretch that we've ever seen in New England from Bill Belichick and ever in his NFL career. So I wouldn't – I don't know what he's thinking. He seemed lost, actually, in his post-game press conference saying, we've got to go back to the drawing board. Well, it's week six. The drawing board and going back to that was, you know, camp and week one and week two. We're now at week six into what is one of the most difficult schedules in the NFL. I said this to you. Now, knowing what we know about the Patriots team, looking ahead at the schedule, there's maybe three wins on the schedule it could be a three and 14 team which would be kind of funny for me i've never known the patriots to be bad it'd be kind of exciting to have the first pick in the nfl so being honest i'm hoping they continue to start mac jones and we continue to see struggles and this team continues to suck because there's nothing worse than being a seven and ten team or a six and eleven team and not really close to that first pick i'd rather be three and 14 and that's the only direction this team is going the rate that this line as well is only going to go up it's only going to go towards las vegas i can you only think see so. it get, yeah i can only see it get to three and a half four the raiders coming off a, a solid win where they played good defense new england now two games in a row where it's 70 something to three and the offense just looks completely inept mac jones does know doesn't know you know what to do he's looking one of the things i saw he's looking at the rush constantly his head isn't even up looking for receivers although they're not even open there's no one really to throw the football to that you that you think is any good he doesn't have a go-to guy juju yeah, because they're all second and third liners and now juju smith is hurt he's out for a few games our injuries are piling up this is a really poor team i struggle to pick them any week moving forward I've got to take Las Vegas here. I don't think this line moves at all. I think this is the perfect number. I really do. 
and there is a slight advantage when it comes to what the algo is seeing. I'm going to give you a couple of stats, Pete. New England's defense ranked eight in the league, allowing 298 yards per game. Vegas on the other side, they're putting up 281 yards per game, both factors into the algo. Those are pretty similar numbers. Las Vegas offense isn't good when it comes to yards per game. They're ranked 29th. So I think New England's defense matches up very well against the Raiders offense. New England boasts a pass D that only allows 190 yards through the air per game, ranking them sixth in the league. And Vegas is passing offense to rank 17th in the league, uh, throwing up 290 yards per game. So I think they've got an advantage in controlling the aerial game. Um, the turnover differential is the big deal. And New England's defense, they're averaging one point s- plus 1.6. Uh, and Las Vegas' offense is minus 1.4. So I think New England's D is going to capitalize on some turnovers specifically with the Belichick, McDaniel slash Garoppolo. He knows his weaknesses. This just reminds me of, you know, uh, he, he's the creator. He knows. He made you. It, my dad would always tell me, hey, I brought you in this world. I can take you out. What, you and this is the same to, thing with threatening Belichick. Threatening to kill you? Your father is threatening to kill you. Oh, multiple times and headlocks. Headlocks. I was a, I was a real fun teenager. I'll say that. Um, I like New England in this spot. I like them to win. I really do. I think New England is going to get to Garoppolo. They're going to put pressure on him specifically because Vegas has a high sack rate, 8.38%, ranking them 22nd. Give me New England. The algo, most importantly, can it do it for a sixth straight week? Has Vegas winning 19.05 to 16.48. You've got 0.43 on the value index in favor of New England. 1917 kind of feels like, you know, a right score there. Pay attention to that one. Margin of victory is not going to change. Uh, so essentially there's a two and a half point margin of victory. That is not going to change. But uh, if the line changes, the algo might flip. The algo might flip. So pay attention. All right. The second free pick. And by the way, when I'm trying to find these free picks, Trying to go three and zero every week. By the way, yep, three and zero. Even though it's got a low amount on the value index, uh, I kind of feel good about it. All right, uh, Philly on the road against the Jets. Lined opened up at six. Money movement, line movement coming in in favor of Philadelphia. It's heading up to six and a half. DraftKings got it at seven. The total is. Staying pretty firm at 42. Jets, a big, big win in Denver with that Hackett, Payton, back and forth. It felt kind of good. I really liked Denver last week, but I'm not going to lie. I like how Hackett backed it up and said, your team sucks. Yeah, I I loved I loved the some of the videos I saw, and I don't know if he really said Robert Sala really said to Sean Payton, "Stay humble," but he mumbled. He said something short. People, lip readers out there on Twitter said that he clearly said, "Stay humble," um, as they shook hands and walked off the field. If he did, I love it. Uh, I I kind of like the Jets team. I think we both kind of do. Like it's a good it's a good defense. It's unfortunate the Rogers situation, but I'm glad they went in there and got a win. This line, as soon as I saw it, and here's where my thinking is now. Here's where my head is starting to realize I'm an idiot and I need to to back away from what I really think. It's as soon as I see the line, I'm like, oh, that's way too many points for a Jets defense. You know, a good defensive team at home coming off a win. So immediately I know mm, my gut is is wrong here. Their Philadelphia are just too good. They're really, really good. They're going to start to hit their stride now. Jalen Hurts is starting to play well. It, it'll kind of go just like the game last week went against us, I feel. It'll be a close game for a long time. The Jets will feel like they are in it. And if you're on the Jets' side, 
you feel pretty good for three quarters about being on the side. And then you just slowly see the game slip away. And Jalen Hurts gets another completion to A.J. Brown. And they hand it off and they run a triple option. And all of a sudden, it's like Philadelphia by 10. And you're hoping for a late cover from the Jets. So that's how I can see the game going now. I'm going to take Philadelphia. I like your take there. I tend to agree with you across the board. The Eagles offense is just on fire. They're ranked fifth in points per game, putting up 28 points a game. Uh, Jets, 24th, putting up 18.6 points a game. That's a 10-point difference right there. Right there. They lead the league with an average of 36 rushes per game and the second best in terms of rush yards per game. So they can essentially do whatever they want. They can control this game and play any game you want. And Philly's D is actually doing a pretty respectable job. They rank 10th in limiting opponent yards per game. And the Jets offense, they're, they stink. We know that. They're ranked 27. So I actually think Philly's D, and maybe you know their D is actually pretty good. The Jets' D offense isn't good. Um, so I have to say that even defensively, it leans in, in the Eagles' favor. And this isn't really a home game for the Jets. It's right down the street on 95 for Philly fans, which those fans travel extremely well. There's going to be a lot of green in the stadium. Give me the Eagles. More importantly, I love where the algo sits. Philadelphia wins 24.36 to 17.36. You are getting 0.51 on the value index in the favor of the Eagles. So, so far, it's you and I. Uh, I, could, I. I could see a 24-17 game, maybe. You know, maybe yeah. a backdoor push here. This, this line is going to seven. It may go higher. Oh, that's that's funny. I don't think it is. I see you know, the okay. I, I see it kind of going to maybe six, which will give us a point of value on Philly. I think as we get closer to the game, the Jets coming off a win, feeling better about themselves going home. I maybe see it staying at six and a half or going to six. That's my that's my feeling on it. Uh, by the way, here's what I'm thinking. I think I'm going to take these free picks and I might put them all into the circa. Ooh, I really might. I love it. I really might. Because so far, I like what the algo is is putting out. And we need a big 5-0 and a week. We're going to go 3-0 and in the free picks. Detroit at Tampa. Tampa coming off a bye. This line opened up as Detroit as a road favorite. Three points. Total was 45 and a half. It's now at 44. I'm seeing DraftKings at 43 and a half. So this number is uh, total is at least trending in the right direction. What do you think here, Pete? Yeah, this is a t an unfortunate game for my brain to handle because these are two of my five teams that I'm confident on every week. Last week I had four and a half. San Francisco added that half after they destroyed the Cowboys. So now it's officially five games. Detroit and Tampa are two teams that I'm going to stay consistent on taking every week. Now they play each other. Uh, Detroit 4-1 and one against the spread. Tampa 3-1 and one off the bye. It, Detroit, listen, Detroit do some things really well. We know that offensively they've got a bunch of weapons. But they stopped a run almost better than anyone. They're third in the league. In, uh, in defensively in terms of rush yards per game. So they know to stop the run. And going on the road against Tampa, it'll be important. Obviously, Tampa are going to try and get most of their stuff through the air. But this game is – I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be tight. I don't know how important the bye week is when you get it early in the season. I think you're probably at a slight disadvantage. You'd like to save the bye week later on when you potentially have more injuries and you need guys to get rest. So I don't know if that'll be a big advantage for them. I'm going to take Detroit in this spot. Even though I think it's going to be close, I think they're going to do enough probably late in the game. Tampa might try to force it. You know, it might see Baker throw a pick late in this game, uh, but I'll take Detroit. Yeah, I agree with you on the bye week. I 
if I saw that in my scheduling, I would be upset. I think it really hurts you, really hurts you. Unless you've had some key injuries early on or guys who, you know, maybe if you were like the Saints or something like that and you had Kamara who was suspended and you had some key players coming back, it does put you at a disadvantage. I, I don't love it. I don't see how it helps you. Detroit ranks six in completion percentage, just under 70%. Impressive yards per pass. They're ranked fourth there, averaging almost eight yards. Uh, Tampa Bay's defense kind of fits into what they're gaining on. Uh, Detroit is gaining on offense. Um, actually pretty good. They're ranked 10th, limiting opponents to six yards a pass. Um, but Detroit's air attack, I think, is poised to exploit a potential weakness in Tampa Bay's pass defense, especially uh, if they maintain that level of precision and effectiveness that they've had. Um, the Lions on the ground, I think you mentioned this, they're averaging 141 rush yards uh, per game, ranking them seventh. And yeah, they are stout against the run. Red zone efficiency, Detroit, 63% of the time they're in the red zone, uh, they're scoring a touchdown ranked seventh in the league. And this is, I think, the biggest matchup that is going to dictate the game because Tampa Bay's defense, they struggle, struggle um, in the red zone. So um, I believe they, yeah, their defense struggles more in the red zone. Uh, I'm going to go with Detroit here. They're just a better team. It feels right. And for the third time, uh, no surprise here. I agree with the algorithm. Detroit winning 24.33 to 19.65. You're getting 1.68 on the value index. Guys, that'll do it if you want more access to bet the algos data, data from the value index. Come on over to patreon.com slash bet the algo. We have something for every budget. Split it with your friends. Split it with your dad. We know your dad is a degenerate too. You learned it from somewhere. Guys, it's been great to have you. Thank you so much for listening. Look forward to seeing the Patreons on the other side of the gate. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers.